Hello, everybody. Welcome to PWL. This is the podcast world order, and we're here to give you our predictions for AEW Revolution that's happening uh, this Sunday. I'm pretty excited. I don't know about you guys. With me tonight, I got Ryan Alvarez. I got back by popular demand. It's Pat. This is a first time in a while, so we've missed you, Pat. Had to class this joint up after the last couple of shows. Um, if I remember from the last uh, WrestleCast in the comments, um, that was a comment directed towards myself. So kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. I'm not sure which of my comments, as I made several that were ignored. <laughs> but as I was consistently ignored in the comments, I decided that I was just going to come on the show um, and not be stopped. That's fair. It's terrifying. And also, hey, I'm Matt. Uh, so, guys, Revolution, you guys excited? Um... I am. I must say, don't go all at once. <laughs> I I am. I'm very excited. Um, we haven't had a good pay-per-view in a while. I guess the last NXT taker was pretty good, but um, or maybe two takeovers ago. One of the last two takeovers was pretty good. pretty darn good. Um, but no, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I think. There's a lot of storylines that are going to come to a head, so we could get a really big reset after uh, after tonight or tomorrow night, excuse me. And uh, it, it should be a good show. I mean, the, the the wrestling is going to be very good. The matches that are set up have a lot of quality wrestling in it. Yeah, I will say that I'm excited because we're all watching it together. Yes, we're being safe. Yes, we're all being mind mindful. Um, but this has, just on the surface, this has one or two ways it could go. Um, at the very least, this will be an average card. Um, and I'll get to which ones I think will kind of be potential speed bumps as we go. Um, but if booked correctly, this could be um, one of the better shows this year. I agree. Um, I think this has a lot of potential to maybe be the worst AEW pay-per-view. Um, but I feel like that's saying a lot considering everything they've done so far has been pretty top-notch in my opinion. Um, I mean, also- full gear from last year seems to be general consensus the worst AEW pay-per-view and still that one had you know, Sheeta Thunder Rosa on it, amongst yeah. other great matches. So, so that was the one where we had the big party at the house for, right? Mm-hmm. No, is that no? I thought so. Nope. Okay, uh. I'm I'm trying to remember because I feel like like I know that the consensus was full gear was not great when we did the um, 2020 review show. I, I wanted to. T- Maybe uh, maybe Maybe I'm confusing it. Maybe I'm confusing it, and it was all out that I loved that not everybody loved. Um, All out was the one that had the Matt Hardy Sammy Guevara match. That's it. it. Yes, that is that. You're right. That is it. I I loved good show. I loved that show, Um, but it, it definitely lost some steam in terms of from the fans, in my opinion, after what happened in that match. Not for me. That was great. So, uh, but I also think there's a lot of potential for some very interesting things to happen here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pat, you and I talked about this and that because there isn't any major, like, I don't know, exploding death match now is suddenly pretty big, but uh, (sighs) plenty of potential for maybe some forbidden door shenanigans. 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 Um, do we want to address that now? Because uh, with what Paul White said, I want to when we get to that spot in the in the card. Well, that's <laughs> is do do where do we have we that several points in the card? Yeah, well, where 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 are are we with that in the card? Because I know. Based on like who you think it is, you might have them slotted in for a spot. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we know for I, 
that the big signing that Paul White mentioned is not the same person who will be in the ladder match. We know it's going to be mm. two separate individuals. Yeah. Um, so I guess I will wait till when we want to talk about that. Yeah, sure. Um, but I am going to tease it by saying I am now convinced that it's not an actual new signing and that it's going to be somebody from another company who is coming over to work and the work is that they have signed with the company. That's going to say the thing that I said before, I bet. <laughs> it's probably going to be what we're all thinking. Maybe. We'll see. Guys, let's go ahead and start with the pre-show match, okay? Pre-show match is, of course, my favorite wrestler, Thunder Rosa, teaming up with Riho versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and, of course, Rebel. You might know her as Reba, but her real name's Rebel. And, guys, I got to tell you, I got the heels winning here. I got Britt Baker and uh, Rebel winning. Um, I'm going to um, go with the faces. Um, Riho has been a huge crowd favor since she's come back, even in defeat. Um, and with Britt Baker's win over, over Thunder Rosa already, I think it's, um, I think Thunder Rosa will get one over here on her. That's fair. I can see this going either way. I am going to go ahead and say that Thunder Rosa is going to get the win on Britt Baker. And um, maybe this will pull them away from each other with maybe a Rio and Brit uh, thing going on. Interesting. All right. Up next, we have uh, well, what's supposedly supposed to be the first match of the night. I've heard it's been confirmed this, but I have not seen that it's been confirmed. Um, it is the Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and MJF with Wardlow at ringside for the AEW Tag Team Titles. Uh, guys, I'm going to go ahead and start this one off here. I think the Young Bucks are going to retain with some shenanigans from one Sammy Guevara. So this is my reservation with this match. And Matt, you and I talked about it earlier in the week. Um my concern is the flow and the pacing of this match. Um, the Young Bucks are a great in, in-ring talent. Um, when they have to slow down and pace the match out, it doesn't really work in their favor. Uh, that's And the cause for concern is because it's cause, it's cause Chris Jericho isn't, isn't Lionheart Chris Jericho anymore. Um, he's not moving and bumping as he should. Honestly, since he's lost the title, I think that he's kind of declined in the ring. Um, we've we've seen a botch or two on 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 Dynamite, um, just in his casual matches. But um, I think he's lost a step over the last year. Um, and you know, inner circle shenanigans aside. Um, I don't know if really MJF can be that be be the carrier here, um, but you know, long winded answer. Um, the Young Bucks are going to retain. Um, this also has um, potential to be a real stinker. Interesting, Pat. What's the I think the match is going to be fine. Um, you know, those guys are going to find a way to make it happen. I mean, Jericho is probably at this point in his career the worst worker out of the four, um, and I think I think in a way that's going to make him elevate his game. Um, you know, he's not going to be the one that holds everybody back, and because of that, I I think we also I agree that there's going to be shenanigans. I think this is the turn. And this is where Jericho gets kicked out of the inner circle. I think we're gonna. I I am going to predict that Sammy is gonna show up, and whereas we think that he is there to get revenge on MJF, the whole time MJF and Sammy have been working together to get rid of Jericho, and Jericho. 
Sammy and the 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 explanation on this is that Sammy learned everything from Jericho, including when it's time to get rid of the old guard. Um, and uh, I think that that will push Jericho kind of off TV for a little while. He might come back and have a small face run uh, to get some redemption against Sammy and everything. Uh, but I could see this being uh, the new landscape of the inner circle and with MJF and Sammy Guevara kind of being the uh, Farouk and Rock of it. Uh, let me go and add here because that's actually a really good point. Chris Jericho recently said in an interview that he's actually going to be one of the commentators for another AEW show that's coming soon to TV, the other one that's been talked about. Jericho said he's going to be taking a commentary role on there as well. Maybe we see him kind of be pushed towards commentary for a while here. I think that's actually. Um, I'm checking just, you know, um, he, doesn't Posi- have, Posi- yeah, dates. he doesn't have tour dates until June. Um, so it's very possible that um, to build off of Pat's uh, prediction, because I think that's, I, I think that's excellent. Um, I think if you're going to do it, though, we're going to get the turn. We're going to get the blow off um, at double or nothing and then have Jericho eat, eat the pin, fully turn it over and then take the time off. Yeah, this could, I mean, this could be the start of it instead yeah. of the ending, um, potentially, obviously. But um, I have I just have a feeling that the, this pay-per-view is going to be built for new beginnings so to speak um we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of rivalries ended here um hopefully because there's a lot of well there's been a lot of really good stuff going on in aew um we are kind of at a standstill where like we've had a lot of the same rivalries like god i hope this is the blow off for team taz and and Sting and Darby. That's a great point there, Pat, because that's our next match. Thank God we can segue to it. Team Taz uh, featuring Brian Cage and Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen and Sting in a street fight. <laughs> and I'm going to be the hopeful optimist here and say Team Taz is going to win with a little help from Will Hobbs. Uh, I think the number game here in a no disqualification match would be a great way to cover up a lot of things as well as having uh, uh, you could just have sting drop Taz after the fight, anything like that, have Darby Allen get beat up because he's got to defend the title again on Wednesday. I think it'd be a great way to segue into him losing the belt because he's hurt from the uh, week before. Um, mm. Yeah. I'm going team Taz. I'm hopeful. I'm probably wrong, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll jump right on that. Um, I truly believe that Team Taz needs to come out on top here. Um, And I completely agree with not burying a champion on TV or at at a pay-per-view or, you know, giving him a loss that's not credible. Um, I don't think a loss here for Darby Allen will do anything to his – do uh, will do anything to his position uh, within the top of the card, um, especially since it's a street fight um, with a part timer in Sting. I think the shenanigans over the last two months now, because uh, Sting debuted on December third, Winter's yeah. Come. It might have been December second. I'm not 100. percent but... No, I want to tell you it was actually like the 17th. No, no. Winter's Come was like the first show in December. I want to tell you, I think it was a week or two in. Didn't, they end, up, didn't they end up pushing it because of the Brody tribute? No, Brody tribute was at the end of December. Yeah. Um, either what way. Was, well, some show was pushed because of that. Yeah, um, I think it was uh, New Year's, New Year's right? back. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Either way. Two weeks here, two weeks, two weeks there. This, this, this has been a three-month feud, and it feels like it's been forever. Um, feels way longer than that. Yeah, it does. And flying by. 
and the and and the problem is we're getting the same promos and the same vignettes you know with a tweak here and a tweak there every single week um team taz oh we're out here you park a lot oh beating guys guys up dragging our darby allen um very very lately it's been oh we're team taz we'll come to the ring oh sting can't do anything sting comes to the ring it's been three weeks in a row now sting has come to the ring uh this last week Dar- darby allen came for the save it's it's very old and i don't know if it's because um they're trying to make us be invested in this more or if they don't have anything else for sting or if they're trying to stretch this out for the ladder match so Darby has an opponent. How many different ways can we present the same thing? Seriously, yeah. So uh, whatever the reasoning is, it needs to stop here. Um, I hope Brian Cage um, does we- uh, does Weapon X on Sting. We don't see him for a while. Um, we, need a, we need a palate cleanser. I'm of the opinion, really, one of two things is either going to happen here. Either Brian Cage is going to pin Darby Allen, or uh, Sting is going to pin Ricky Starks. Oh no! Don't do that. I think it's one of the two. Don't do that. I, I, that's what I'm just what I'm thinking. Because who, who's going to eat the pin there? Ricky Starks or Sting needs to eat the pin. Yeah, no, he doesn't need to. Sting I mean, needs if, to put over the younger, hotter talent in his debut. Why, why, why are you there then? Why are you, why are you in matches? To make Darby Allen look good. Now I will say W or AEW has done a really good job mm-hmm. of when they've brought in these older veterans. For the most mm-hmm. part, they have been there to enhance other talent, mm-hmm. um, and they have rarely gone over, which is good. Which is a good thing. That's what they should be doing with those guys. Um, that being said, you're all wrong. You're all wrong about how this is going to be booked. Um, I'm in a another life. I was a fantasy booker, and um, let me tell you how it's going to go. We are going to see Sting turn on Darby at towards the end of this match when. Sting sees Darby going to do something that he cannot come back from. And what I mean by that is, you know, he's going to go do something drastic to win this match. And Sting's going to stop him, and it's going to cost them the match. And we're all going to wonder till Wednesday, why did Sting do it? Why did he turn on Darby? You know, Team Taz is going to be shocked by it. They're not going to really understand, but they're not going to care because they got the W. Um, And then Sting's going to come out on Wednesday and go, Darby, I saw you going down a road I went down 25 years ago, um, and I couldn't let you do it. I'm saving you from becoming me. And that will set up a feud with Darby and Sting uh, after Sting – also cost Darby the title on Wednesday night uh, when whoever wins uh, the ladder match takes the title off him. I like it. <laughs> I do like it. I just uh, I want different. that to be the case. I think that's a really good way to go down this and maybe Sting gets paired up with someone else it's kind of a foil as well there, so we're building up two talent. Um, I just I have the feeling that this is ending with blood and guts versus uh, the team Taz versus team Sting. Take uh, Sting and Taz out of the match, and you have them set up. You already have four guys for team Taz. Now you just need to put people around. Well, but do you really have four guys for team Taz? I know you keep saying Taz's son, but like, I don't know, man. Really, it's really this is a, really this, a, is a this is a premier rivalry. Sure. Like, as like sad is, as is are, are we are yeah. we gonna are we gonna I mean, I mean look, it's probably honestly it's probably one of the most tired stories in AEW, in my opinion, right now. But 
as far as star power goes, it's got all the pieces that AEW is trying to build. Um, so in that sense, um, you know, are you going to put someone who's green in this ring like that? Yeah. Um, really when we're talking about team team Taz there's really only three 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 core members you know and that and you know outside of Taz and Hook um this is a street fight if they were the real heels this wouldn't go for longer than a couple of minutes everyone just rush out at once man I would love for that to be the way they do this listen and that's and I I don't predict that because um I think the AEW will get a little bit more mileage out of this, um, but I'm very intrigued to fade, to find out what the outcome of this is. It's gonna it's gonna be good. Not as long as Darby doesn't get the pin, I just have a bad feeling that we're all gonna be wrong about it. Darby's gonna pin Brian Cage again. Is Darby gonna screw Sting? Uh, both of those, I like the idea of. I don't oh, think I don't think it will happen because, in my well, in my, in my opinion, W or God, I keep doing that. AEW, um, KJR. I know, man. <laughs> I'm too too old. You, you've been too gone for too long. long. Um, <laughs> no, but in my opinion, the they don't have enough faces. Frontline faces, so mm-hmm. why? I mean, who are you turning face in response to Darby going heel if that happens? Sure, you know, or are you talking about in the immediate match? No, well, I would just it's mean awesome. in general, I just mean in general, but if your plan goes out there, Jericho becomes, yeah, the face. absolutely, but um, he's not a young. No. talent. They're still relatively <coughs> new to it, but all of Death Triangle has been acting for a face since the split. Yeah, very face-like. Dude, yeah, well, I mean, shades of gray, obviously, but... There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if the fans are buying them, the fans are buying them. I mean, you have arguably three of the top five wrestlers in the world in one faction. Oh. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, that is a hint to a future prediction I have on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's go ahead and move on to our next match here. It's Hikaru Shida versus Ryo Mizunami for the AEW Women's World title. Uh, I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. I don't see Ryo Mizunami taking the belt back to Japan and defending it there. I think this is just Hikaru Shida winning one more on pay-per-view before she drops that double or nothing. Yeah, um, who, who that is... Um... We don't know. I do have a theory about it. M D. Uh, um, I'm gonna muddy that up for you here in a little bit. I know, uh, but um, I do, I do think, I do think that Sheeta gets the win. She retains again. Um, although, although I really do like Girl Okada. Um, I think this will be a really good, solid women's match. Um, did you say? Did you say Gokata? Girl Okada, yeah. Um, and and this is and you, and see people think like I hate all of, all of women's wrestling because I constantly just take big dumps on it's just what, Japanese girls, no, no, which is why the, why the dump. All of this is going bad. Which is yeah, why no, which is why the dumps. Um, because I've given Impact and NXT a lot of grief um, over the way that they've gone about their uh you know tag team divisions um but i have been thoroughly impressed with the way that not only this women's eliminator tournament has been booked um how it has not been um how it how it has been chalk for 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 anyone really um how they are still putting over um the joshi shy side of this card i love it um, and I hope this is what we see more of from the from from the women's division. If this is how we get more storytelling and more, and how we learn more about like the 
about the Joshi side of the division, like I am all for it because I think that's the one thing that um, that the women's division, as far as the Joshi wrestlers, need is they need more is they they need more exposure. Nobody knows them in the states. Um, in this in this format, we you know we get a little bit of back backstory with them. We watch the match. We become invested. We want to see more of of them. Um, so I really hope this is a format that they keep going down the road. Um, obviously, not every you know every time we get to a tournament, we start we restart another one. Um, but maybe just small vignettes here and there, like you know, for anyone really. Um, Maybe that'll be an elevation thing coming, you know, post mania. Um, but I'm, ve- but I'm very excited. Definitely, Pat. Who do you think here, Mizunami or Hikaru Shida? Uh, Shida is going to retain. And while this is not who Paul White was talking about, <coughs> we need a fourth. We need a fourth horseman for Tully Blanchard's new four horsemen. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And instead of you know the enforcer role that you think you need to fill, Tessa Blanchard is going to show up to complete the new four horsemen. And this is gonna set up a feud with Sheeta immediately. Um and she's gonna be she is going to be the the head of this. I mean this is this is Tully. And, you know, FTR is obviously, you know, top guys. The brain buster. But, but, but Tessa is the core of the four. Does that make Sean Spears the Ric Flair? Or I guess he's the... <laughs> no, that... No, that, that, that I mean, Sean Dick, Dick, the he, would be, he would be the Tully. <laughs> if we're... Uh, as, long as, as long as next week, you know, we don't, you know, get, you know, Tully impregnating somebody from the women's division, I think will be okay. I mean, it's possible. Uh, you know, I was not really following that. Did they actually try to say it was Rick's? Uh, they backtracked a lot when Lacey Evans was no longer actually able to do. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they're like, uh, she's not pregnant. She's not pregnant. She wrote Space Mountain, and then as soon as she was like, I'm pregnant, they were like, Whoa, we didn't mean any of that. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, we totally forgot about how Lacey Evans was a mother figure to, you know, and, you know, like a role model for her daughter and a stand-up person in, in like, in a military. Like, screw all of that. You're going to start to fuck Rick, Rick Flair yeah. and have his babies. <laughs> let's, let's leave that for now because let's stick with AEW, okay? Let's leave it for now because that's the whole... <laughs> A whole other tangent we can have another tangent. That's fun. Uh, you know what, though? Now seems like a real good time to talk about Paul White's announcement of them bringing in a Hall of Fame worthy talent to come. Now, here's what we do know. All right. Tony Khan has said it is a male wrestler that he has been a fan of for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, we have seen hints of Mark Henry uh, just this morning. Kurt Angle posted a 45 second hype up video that was pretty dope. It was really cool. Um, Speculation is going rampant, honestly. So, so many people. This has been, I think, the most disgusting since Wednesday. I don't know if anyone's really talked about anything else. Uh, And so, I'm gonna go ahead and start this one off here because I've, I've, I'm in. I'm in. I can't believe I'm saying this, and I, I feel crazy for saying this. Oh, I'm going to hate myself on Monday when I'm wrong because I said his name. Uh, guys, I think it's CM Punk. I think it's CM Punk. I know work, he came out work, on work, Twitter work. and said, no, it's not me. But that's yeah. exactly what you would say. But, but, but anybody is going to say that if it's them. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? Here's the big thing for me. Booker T came out and said after they hired Paul White that, you know what, at this point, why wouldn't CM Punk go over? It makes too much sense for him to. The storylines are there for him. They have the money for him. They can make this well worth his time. And I'm sitting here thinking, God, I don't know where we go after 
spoiler alert, Kenny Omega kills John Moxley at the end of the show. And it it just it has to be CM Punk. It has to be someone to come in and face Kenny. Man. Uh, Did I just sell you on this? I yeah. don't I will be the first one to say I respect CM Punk the pro wrestler. I hate CM Punk the person. I can't stand him. Um I think the way he handled his business leaving WWE was cowardly, uh, particularly the way he um, the way the things he tried to stand for and talk about, and then the way he handled his contract was awful. Um, but this, I mean, if you are behind AEW and you want to see them flourish, I think that has to be the move you're hoping for the absolute most. Um, Ken, Kenny Omega, CM Punk, Dream Match, like... Double or nothing. Uh, that would be huge. Huge. Think of the ratings on Wednesday. Um, yes. I mean, they're, they would top the million... Mark easy, I think. Um, and I wouldn't be shocked. I, I hate to say that he would be this good, uh, but I wouldn't be shocked to see like a 1.5. Um, to be honest with you, I think a lot of people would suddenly pull in. I think you would pull a ton of the committed WWE crowd. Um, but uh, I have a different angle, and I teased it already. Angle, um, <laughs> that's funny, but no, a Kurt angle. Um, no, but to answer your questions, um, this is not an actual signing, this is a fake signing, um, with all of the working together that is going on, and it is going to be none other than the ace himself. Go ace. He's coming. From, from Tanahashi from New Japan. That is the and, first time I've heard anyone say that. Yeah, that's that's that that's the first time I've seen anybody mention Tana. The swerve. It's the swerve. Because here's the thing. Oh, my God. The story writes itself. Because here's the thing. Oh. Tony Khan has been a fan of him since he was a child, since he was a kid. Tony Khan don't watch WWE. Tony Khan brought in all of his talent from New Japan. So this work has to deal with Tony Khan being the forbidden door. It would make sense, too, for him versus Kenny, considering that was the last New Japan match. And when Kenny annihilates him at the next pay-per-view... Please, God. Who's next? The guy who's currently injured? No. Of course the answer is, as Kenny is standing over Tanahashi... Just celebrating, talking about being the best in the world. All the dollars start raining from the sky. So the guy who's injured? And we close we close the show with Okada on the entrance ramp. Guys, we really need to bring back creative control. It's it oh, is yeah. it, it is look, guys, I'm all in. The New Japan Impact uh, AEW Triangle is in full effect, and we are going to have the summer of killing WWE. That goes along it's, with pro, it's, uh, John's promo on Impact. It is. It is. Him, and I'm the leader now. It is old yeller season for the E. <laughs> All right. All right, Ryan Alvarez. Who we got? Um. So just to kind of fill in some holes from from Pat, 
Um, Tana doesn't have a New Japan Cup match until March 15th. Um, exactly. Enough time to travel. So, it, A, it is what enough time to travel. Though? B, it also depends private, on... Private jets, bitch. No matter. I mean, it also depends mm-hmm. on whether when he comes into the country, if he has to quarantine. If he's got a quarantine, it's a big question mark. That's it. And I feel like Japan would make him. I, I also feel like Japan, uh, that new, that new Japan. I'm taking another turn uh, because very recently um, we had something come back into our lives that briefly left our lives and then just reappeared out of nowhere. Um, that is NWA. And yes, <laughs> Say what I am is. saying that the signing is none other than the 865-day reigning NWA World Heavyweight Champion. That is Mr. Nick Aldis. Um, you don't need Kenny Omega to be in an immediate feud after he kills Mox because he needs to go be the belt collector. You need to send him to Impact to go get the, you know, the title off of Rich Swan. You don't want him neck deep in, an, in, in another storyline because um, that's what according to Dave Meltzer um, is what we are on track for is for a matchup between them at Rebellion so I can see um, some more um, shots at impact um, I think that um, you know this I think this segment ends um, with kayfabe um, Tony Khan purchasing NWA and in turn after double or nothing we get a super card with NWA and AEW um, a G1 super card is typically summer right mm-hmm. but you need something to combat with it I'm not saying combat with it mm-hmm. Guys, we might have the ultimate all-in card. New yeah. Japan, Ring of Honor, Impact, yeah. AEW. We could have that this July. There's still opportunities for that. It, yeah. would be, it would be super appropriate for them to have an all-in card mean all-inclusive. And every major um, wrestling brand that is not WWE is represented in matches and we have champion versus champion dream matches and you know battle royals and ladder mm-hmm. matches like let's let's have uh you know freaking the briscoes god lucha brothers and uh you know young bucks ftr ftr yeah like in a match let's make that happen Let's just go straight to FDR versus the Briscoes. Yes. Yeah. Um, that is probably the number one tag match, dream match that I would like to see. Um, yeah, but I'm 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 all for for this. Um, I don't really know um, the way that NWA is holding right now, considering um, you know, when they had the pandemic and even when they came back for a brief period of time. They didn't have any eggs in their basket. Um, so I'm very curious as to see what their pay-per-view March 21st is going to be. But if they want to put NWA back on the map, you put your champion on, you know, arguably the hottest wrestling promotion in America. You put you put him on your pay, you put him on your pay-per-view and you flaunt that he is a huge champion and this is why we don't need the belt collector immediately okay because you have omega worried 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 about mox okay he's gonna come out he's not he's nice and shiny we don't we don't even see omega this segment which is which is which is the best part because this will build for all out nick aldis versus kenny omega we could also uh I mean, there's enough time for it to happen. We could also return to Aldis, Cody Rhodes, three. Mm-hmm. That could even be a pit stop. And I thought about it, 
And then I'm like, well, you know, when, when are we going to find the loophole where Cody can get his world title shot? It's coming up. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. Don't watch. Option watch. C. Huh? Option C, perhaps. Winning the X Division title. Oh, my God. Hey, yeah, you yeah, never know. All right, guys. Oh, that's smart. That's so smart. Mm, good <laughs> on you, Matt. That's a good one. I mean, he said option C. It's also, you know, the tag team of the two man power trip. Yeah. <laughs> so, up next, we got the Casino Battle Royale tag team battle royale. All right. Yeah. I'm going to list off the uh, participants now. And this could, this could change tomorrow morning. This could change 30 minutes before the show. They could add people. Who knows? The person who I have winning isn't even in the match currently. So, uh, could we get? A, could we still get a rundown of who oh, I is? Am. So we have Bear Country, uh, two teams of the Dark Order: John uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Three and three. Yeah, they added. Um, oh yes, added, we do. They you added know. five and ten. You're right. Uh, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, five and ten. Um, Santana and Ortiz. Butcher and the Blade, Private Party, Death Triangle, um, being represented by Pac and Ray Phoenix, the Seidel Brothers, Austin and Colton Gunn of the Gun Club, uh, the Pretty Picture, which is the team of Pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Benoni, SCU, Chris McDaniels and Frank Kazarian, the Natural Nightmares, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, Varsity Blondes, which are Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison, and Jurassic Express, Jungle Boys, and Luchasaurus. I didn't hear you say FTR. Man. They're not officially on their list yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, FTR has got to be a part of this match, right? Uh, yeah, I think so too. Unfortunately, I don't think they're winning. No. So, you, so what what team do you have that's not in that you expect to? I- I said shenanigans. I said forbidden door shenanigans. Ain't nobody realer than Gorilla. G O D. God damn it. Wow. I, this I hope this is I hope we're all right about all of this and it's just all new Japan all the time. So my like big thing is G-O-D. Gorillas, Tanahashi. Uh, I just I, give us everybody. Give us everybody. It's a I new Japan, think, new Japan takeover show. I also think it'd be real easy to slip the Good Brothers in here and have the Good Brothers win, and we go Good Brothers versus Young Bucks at the next pay per view. Uh, I could really see that happening, but I think the Good Brothers are gonna be a little preoccupied with Finn Juice, uh, maybe causing some shenanigans as well in AEW. So I, I don't believe Grills of Destiny are currently set for any matches in in New Japan. Um, if I remember correctly, they recently just sent a picture out of Tonga Loa in California with, uh, <laughs> I would say, I would say Hikaru Leo, but the, the third, the third brother, I think cousin actually, um, they've been joined so with the young boy. There's a chance. <laughs> and FTR just recently a thing with FTR on Twitter talking about how, look, this is going to happen. I hope you boys ready. I don't think FTR is going to Japan. I think this is happening on AEW. I think G- uh, G.O.D. is coming, and they're going to face FTR and the Young Bucks because so I think it's time. Yeah. Death taxes, G.O.D. wins the heavyweight tag titles over the Young Bucks. All right, Cod, who you got? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Dropping bombs over here. You know, I, I, I do think it's kind of odd that we don't have FTR on this list already. Um, I don't know what that means. I mean, it's a list off Wikipedia, so who the hell knows? Yeah. Um, but I'm going to pick someone just based off of what is in what's already on the list. Um you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go. It's going to be a swerve. It's going to be a big joke. Um, going to be the Varsity Blondes. 
Hmm, I like it. Um, I think this is a great, outstanding opportunity for a young, up-and-coming tag team. Now, I will say, if we did have the acclaimed in this, and I know that one of them... Uh, Anthony Bonds one? out with a knee injury. There you go, yeah. If he was 100% and they were in this, they would be my pick, without a doubt. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a case to pick, you know, Silver and Reynolds, obviously, because, you know, they're the hottest thing on BTE you know, at the moment. Um, but if you want to give a young, fresh tag team kind of a, you know, kind of, you know, fluky win, but still, you know, show that you are investing in what you have on your roster and what you have in, you know, the future of the tag division, I think this is a great idea. Um, you know, by, by, by hook or by crook here, um, I think they get it done. Um, I don't know how, but um, it would it would be nice to see a different tag team win it. Um, I almost went with Death Triangle as well, um, but I don't think that's the right tag team to come out of that staple. All right, Pat, what you got? Uh, I would love for Cod to be right and we get a new young – Tag team to get a, a rub here. I especially would be thrilled if, like, Top Flight would be the team. Um, that being said, I am going to go totally in the opposite direction and tell you this is where we start to see uh, the beginning of the end of the whole SCU thing since, uh, you know, they're on that whole the next time we lose, we break up thing. Uh, um, oh yeah. Does so that go for battle royals, or is that like? Uh, I don't think you. I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's just tag matches. I think they will win and lose to the Young Bucks uh, in the tag in a tag title match, which will then set up a Kaz versus Daniels in a retirement match. For the next pay per view, hopefully Kazarian wins. Uh, you and that yes, I mean spoiler alert, uh, we will be seeing Christopher Daniels go ahead and retire. <sighs> yeah, I gotta tell you, the more I think about this, it makes so much sense for the Good Brothers to win here. But God, I gotta stick with my heart on this. Mm-hmm. I gotta. Um, Real quick, do we see any other? Um, do we maybe see an impact tag team in this? I think for me, the question is whether or not. I mean, that would be the Good Brothers, right? Well, I mean, if that's, yeah. If you're, you know, I, uh, yeah, they're the Impact World Champions. I mean, um, I'm talking maybe like a mid card tag, tag team, maybe. I feel like if you're going to go with that route, you're going to bring in somebody with a lot of a lot of name, you know? It just depends on whether or not Alex Shelley can show up. Yeah, that's exactly who I was thinking, which he should be. Well, I just – I was, I was going to say, I just assumed he'd still be – is not going to be Shelley uh, still. I mean, I mean, heck, it could even be, you know, Saban and Storm. Um, I, w- I would imagine um, Alex Shelley has gotten his second round of COVID vac- vaccination and is good to go. Um, I mean, but but I think I think just another wrinkle. If you're if you're not on, um, you know, the Good Brothers Finn Finn Juice train to build to next week to sacrifice. Um, Maybe you throw in like a um, triple XL or, you know, Save and Storm or Reno Scum just to kind of show the working relationship because I just don't feel other than the Good Brothers, nobody from Impact has come over. I I just don't feel like you have a, a team worth bringing. And that's maybe that sounds shitty, but, um, 
it is the truth for me. Uh, you just, you know, I, I don't want to see the guns unless it's the guns. I don't want to see uh, Jason Alexander unless he's got Ethan Page with him. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't care about Reno. So, <laughs> well, whatever, Marty Janetti. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> You're talking George Costanza is gonna walk down the aisle. All right, up next, we have Hangman Adam Page versus Big Money Matt Hardy. This is a big money match. The winner receives the loser's first quarter earnings of 2021. I just don't see Hangman losing at this point. Pass the Ryan. Pass the Ryan. Matt Hardy's winning this. Here's why. Okay, through devious ways, Matt Hardy wins this. Here's the catch and swerve. Hangman Page doesn't have any first quarter winnings because he's been at the bar. And he gives him a big stack of bar tabs. I just don't know if we're going to go comedy route with this, you know? They've been doing it the whole time, though. Yeah, but at the same time, this could be, once again, Hangman racking up big wins, single matches. Oh, yeah. We got this, this momentum going for when he finally challenges Kenny. I would say this is a win on a pay per view. I wouldn't say this is a huge win for him. Um, a huge win at this point. I I would say um, if they're going to go comedy route with this, um, big you know Matt Hardy will win via shenanigans. Um, you know, and have that reveal. But if it's just a if it's just a wrestling match, uh, you know, Matt Hardy's gonna you know fall at the end, and I'm a hundred percent fine with that. Either way is fine with me. Um, sticking to my guns, though, I'll go I'll go Matt Hardy for the win. Pat, what you think? Well, no one's gonna be laughing after this prediction. Um, who? Joey Ryan. Has, who has been? Yeah. <laughs> Who has been helping Adam Page as of late? The Dark Order. No. The Dark. The Dark Order. Who is Adam Page not going to join? Are you, are you saying Dark Order's going to turn heel on him? Who has Adam Page refused to join? The Dark Order. And who was a, Who was originally supposed to be the leader of the Dark Order? Did we forget um, the dark? Did we forget the Dark Order's a cult? They're dark, not. They're not a cult. The dark, anymore, the dark Order is going to turn on Adam Page because their new leader Matt Hardy has this whole thing set up from the beginning. Big money Matt has the whole world in his hands. I'm gonna let you finish. I have two issues with this. And you never say no to the Dark Order. When you here, refuse... Here are my two questions for you. A, isn't Negative One the leader of the Dark Order? Yes. No. Yeah, kids, Because kids are stupid and they sign anything. And number two, does that mean Private Party is part of the Dark Order? No, they are other associates of Matt Hardy. Um, I think this is getting too convoluted. <laughs> yeah, no, also, big, hey. he's big money. Matt is the ultimate heel. He's Vince McMahon. He is the leader of the Dark Order by having signed the Dark Order, but he also has plenty of other talent. Um, they did just turn face, so. It would be a really quick about face because they just had this whole back backstage thing where, you know, they're going to improve people's lives, you know, for, you know, the better good. And that, that is what you say right before you stab somebody in the back. I'm going to let you live your fantasy, Pat. Um, Fear of the dark. Order. Back creative control. <laughs> Fear the dark order. We need we need we need football season to be over. 
<laughs> Up next, it's Miro and Kip Sabian versus Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor in a tag match. I have Kip Sabian eating the pit in here. Oh, no. Why? Because I think Miro is going to leave the team. All right. I think it's time for singles wrestler Miro. And then the only reason I say that is I, I'm looking back at one specific thing from the wedding. Do you remember when Kip accidentally clotheslined Miro and Miro was like, I'm going to rip your head off mm-hmm. or Kip got dropped? I think Miro's going to be tired of losing with a loser. So it is huh. game over for Kip Sabian. Interesting. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. If that happens, it's acceptable. Um, I have Kip Sabian and Mira winning this match. Also, uh, I think Miro needs a big dominant win on a pay-per-view. Um and while these guys are booked as being the best man and all that, like they're not necessarily booked as a tag team. They're more of a stable. I mean, they've only put them in tag matches so far, really. No, Miro's had single matches. But... Yeah, I don't know. Kyle, what are you thinking here? Um, <sighs> this is the one I'm torn on the most. Because I because well because I agree it's time for singles Miro. I think it's time for him to absolutely just un unleash hell. Um, at the same time, I agree he's going to leave the group. Um, Kip eats the pin. Um, Shenanigans. Shenanigans. From a returning Trent Beretta. Um, it's nice. been almost three months now. Um, in his tweet, he said he'd be back in a few months. Um, so even, you know, if it's just to put his face on TV, um, kind of to give the heels the, the last, you know, boot out, you know, yeah. um, I don't care. Uh, I think I think um, I think that Charles will um, get the pin on Kip. Miro will be absolutely frustrated. He will destroy the ring, um, but he will dominate every single other a- aspect of this match, without a doubt. All right, all right. Let's roll uh, ladder match time. Base of the. Right for a future shot at the TNT title. This will be on Wednesday. Uh, at least the title match will be on Wednesday. Here we, currently have, we have Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson versus Scorpio Sky versus Penta L Zero M versus Lance Archer with Jake Roberts versus Max Caster of the Acclaimed versus To Be Determined. So we're going to give you guys who we think fills in that last spot. And we're also going to give you our winner here. Um Guys, I really want to sit here and tell you that this is going to be Chris Bay here. <laughs> I really want to sit here and tell you it's Chris Bay. But, God, if I'm anything, I'm an Ethan Page fan. And you know I got to stick with Ethan Page, who just put out a uh, more information to come tweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, unfortunately, I – nah, screw it. I have Ethan Page winning. <laughs> I'm doubling down because I think Ethan Page is a good kind of foil for Darby Allen. Not necessarily hmm. going along Pat's idea of with Sting, but Ethan Page, everything Darby Allen isn't. And by that, I mean, looks like he belongs in the ring. Zing! <laughs> Cod, who you got? Um, so just to clarify, this sixth person isn't – uh, you know, it doesn't have to be like a newly signed person, correct? It doesn't have to be, no. They just said it, it's someone who has already been picked. Good. Because this person who's going to be in this ladder match has got to have no 
fear. Penta El Zero Miedo is going to be in this match. I thought Dark- he was already announced for the match. Yeah, he's he? already announced for it. Oh, no. Okay. Good. I literally because- just listed this. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. It's a, it's a part... It's a part of the thing. Hold on. So, um, so, so back in the uh, 2019 Impact days, um, you know, uh, him along with Ray Phoenix would have terrific ladder matches, um, a lot of which contained Rob Van Dam. Your sixth person in this match is RVD. He has not been seen on TV. Since he was a part of cancel culture, um, he is not. He has not been involved with any of the Me Too or the speaking out. Um, he doesn't need to bring Katie Forbes. Um, this could be a one-off spot. It doesn't need to be anything. You just need to go in and just be you. And um, he doesn't even need to be involved. You know, a whole lot. But just the name brand of Rob Van Dam, it's a, it, it's a no-brainer. Is um, that your Paul White prediction? No. Oh, we already, yeah, we've already done that. Oh, we already did that. That's right. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting, confused, getting confused with all these surprises. I know, I know, right? Um, I thought I thought about Christian... But I don't know if the ladder match is his game anymore. Is the is the problem? Um, I WWE don't know. Christian? Yeah, he's also rumored heavily to be yeah the the Hall of Famer. That yeah, what? he's, a, he's uh, apparently not under a WWE contract currently. Confirmed. Wow. Yes, yeah, so there be- are speculations that he could be either one of the surprise individuals. Who's winning the match then? Um, Penta. Yeah. All right. Man, Penta. I, thought that, uh, I thought that was pretty clear, by the way. He came out with that. Penta, yeah. I just thought Penta and RVD would end up canceling each other out. Cancel culture? No. You can't, uh, you, no. Can't, um, you, can't, you can't cancel something that is one of a kind. Penta des- deserves oh, this. Um. I think that also he would kill Darby Allen, and that would make me happy. Yes. All right. Pile, pile, pile drive his skinny ass right onto the apron. Sometimes you just got to do it for the rock. <laughs> All right, Pat. Who's your surprise entrance, and who's winning this match? Man, you totally stole my thunder because it was going to be Chris Bay. <laughs> um, and I was really itching to tell you to shut the hell up when you were like, we aren't really seeing other impact guys. Um, so it makes a lot uh, of I'm going to go with Chris Bay still. <laughs> and I know that, uh, Cody Rhodes said he wanted to sign Chris Bay right before he signed impact. Uh, Chris Bay is going to win when it looks like Cody Rhodes is going to win. And Zombie Shack comes out and costs him the match. As you all know, Shaq died uh, on Wednesday night and his body ascended to heaven and it magically disappeared out of an ambulance. It did um, vanish. It didn't magically vanish. Um, somehow we lost a seven foot one, four hundred pound man. <laughs> Van- vanished out of an ambulance in thin air, probably thick air. But um, so Zombie Shack gets is uh, he's gonna he's gonna choke slam Cody off the ladder. Wait to hell, which ironically will also set up. Chris Bay, Cody Rhodes, when Cody Rhodes wins the X Division title after Chris Bay does. Option C. <laughs> I don't, I, hey, 
I'm, I'm putting it out there in the world. It's your secret tunnel, see. that bitch. When it happens, <laughs> I, guess I want you to come back to this video. Everybody say, Cod, you are correct. Ryan, you are correct. You are the ultimate foreseer. It's going to happen. Cod. That's the way you get your title shot. Cod. Fuck RVD. God damn. <laughs> Uh, okay exploding barbed wire death match time it's Kenny yeah. Omega versus John Moxley can we all agree that Kenny Omega is winning this match before we go any further yeah uh, I am going to say everybody dies uh, so here we are <laughs> let me give you the rules here three sides of the ring uh, the ropes will be covered in barbed wire um, apparently management and medical professionals would not allow all four sides in case of emergencies, as Ken okay. is telling me. At Contact. least you're telling me that beforehand. Yes. Contact with barbed wire triggers explosions on corresponding side. Triple mm. hell, which means the three zones uh, on the floor wired are wired to explosive. So three zones on the floor wired to explosives. Uh, and there's going to be a 30 minute countdown timer until all explosions in and around the ring detonate. So, this is as close to traditional exploding barbed wire death rules as possible, yeah. with the exception of there's not all four sides covered in barbed wire. May I, may I start? Uh, yeah, don't steal my thunder. This is, this is your cinematic match of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be real. We can't show somebody dying on air. Yeah, we can. Okay. Well, I mean, they try. Everybody to, you know. dies. Um, my thing is, you know, really they can have they can have the spots that are fine, you know, but th- I just don't I just don't see how, you know, you could put these two guys in an environment like this. You know, it, it it just seems very off the wall, crazy. It seems perfectly built for you to have a cinematic match. If there's one match on this entire card, other than maybe the street fight, to have a cinematic match, this is it. Oh, this God. is your only shot, okay? And this is a great way for Kenny Omega to hit the one winged angel get out of the ring, everything explodes, and Moxley dies. God, you're so close to the right answer. You are just this close to it. This isn't going to be cinematic. There's not going to be a cinematic Stop. match on the night. There's not going to be one. If there was, it was going to be the street fight. You were right there, but I don't think there's going to be any. <laughs> because Japan did it. We're going to do what Japan does. This is going to be in front of a crowd. Maybe this was taped already. I'll give you that, but this isn't going to be a cinematic match. This whole thing can... with Kenny Omega winning, mm. and then him and the Good Brothers doing everything they can to keep John Moxley in the ring when it explodes, that will write him off for six to eight months while he's home being a dad. Because he's also been on TV just about every week. He's been there except for the few times he had, or the one time he had COVID. Mm-hmm. So, a, we're going to give John Moxley a rest on television because I think all of us are sitting here saying we could use it. <laughs> Enough already. Yeah. Um, I think we can both agree that this is not going to be a live match. I could still see it being live. I could. I, I, think, I think it's set up where they could still do it. You just have your pyrotechnics team be more ready on the go. That's all. I can see that. I'm gonna sticking be covered in water here, before though. they get in the ring. Cinematic, be known. Um, yeah, I. It's a it's a flip of the coin. I I think I think we will all get the desired result at the end of the night. At least John John Moxley will die. Or six to eight. They're not gonna kill his character. No, no, he's just gonna get. Well, no, but I, I'm, I'm saying like they're they're cover. going to write him off as. Oh my he, God, they're gonna Phantom of the Opera him. They're gonna they're gonna, gonna give they're him gonna the Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. <laughs> they're gonna put him in the Randy Orton mask. Yeah. All right, Pat, give us your predictions here. They're gonna put him in a slapjack mask. 
So help me God if you just say two words. Go on. Yes. If you dare say what I think you're going to say. Oh, my God. No. Um, <laughs> Good. If it's if it's anyone, if it's, a, if it's anybody, unfortunately, it's going to be Rich Swan. But. Wait, are you talking about coming out after the match? Yeah. So are you still in agreement that Kenny Omega wins here? Oh, of course. Okay. Um, Ma, we, we've had Mox. Mox has been done. Yeah. Um, Mox needs some time off TV. He's been oversaturated. Mox is actually one of those guys that would um, stand to work like a Brock schedule, in my opinion. He's one of the few guys in... AEW, who's like got that Randy Orton syndrome in ring. Mm. He's just not a good champion. He's I don't just, want to say he's not even a good champion. He just he's not interesting once he has he, it. His matches are all the same. Oh, which is why I'm yawning because he bores me to death. Um, no, so what's going to happen is Omega's going to win, and. Uh, Rich Swan is going to put him out and stand tall at the end of the night, um, setting up the Rich Swan shenanigans later on. Um, but uh, I do think, yeah, Omega had a one winged angel. I don't think it's going to be a cin- cinematic match. Um, I will, however, predict. Moxley will be the, the first person ever to pop out of the one winged angel. Um, Coda's already done that. Huh? Coda did it. Did he do it or did he put his foot on the rope? Okada put his foot on the rope. I'm pretty certain. Okay. All right. Well, then never mind. I thought that it had only ever been foots on the ropes. Um, I was talking about a clean pop at two. Um, but if Although- Abush. Although Okada may have also done it when they did the two out of three falls match. No, he did not. He got pinned on both one winged angels. Because remember, he got pinned on the first one and we were like, God damn it, Kenny is not going to win because he already used his finisher. Then when he hit it again, we were like, oh, it's happening. It happened. I have to go back and watch it. I don't, the point I don't is, know. we're going to be disappointed that it's Rich Swan at the end of the night uh, if somebody comes out to not let Kenny stand tall after the match. Um, there's going to be three people who stop him. Don't say it. Stop him. Um, it would be really good if that was the three. And do it. Say it. Which, do which, it. Say it. Just say it, do it. You want me to say the three now, or do it? Yeah, do it. Say it. Yeah, it'd be Young Bucks and Cody. Yeah. And this could... is how we move towards Cody Rhodes getting his title shot because Kenny's not doing it for AEW anymore, and Cody's got to step up for the company. There's got to be a fight between EVPs. <laughs> So I'll put this out there. Um, Brandy Rhodes is pregnant. Are they gonna give him a title run right before she's getting ready to deliver a baby? I would no, he's, no. He's, not gonna, he's not gonna win. Because Kenny Omega is gonna put him out just like he put out John Moxley. Go ahead and call Kenny Omega what he is, and that's the daddy killer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, it no. It's out there, everybody. <laughs> Hide your kids, hide your wife. Kenny Omega's down. With that, guys, I'm going to ask you one last question here before we go because Lord knows we've gone on for a while. What match are you most excited for? (laughs) Is it Daddy Killer? You going to say Daddy Killer? No, it's the 
It is the ladder match. It's got to be the ladder match. There's the intrigue with the sixth man, whoever it may be. The guys that are already in the match are excellent competitors. It's going to be uh, probably the match of the night. I agree. Yeah, that- yeah, there has not been a single ladder match at AEW that has not lived up to the billing. So that's the... I, mean, I think that's certainly the easy prediction as match of the night. I, however, am going to go with the uh, tag match. The tag title or the casino battle royale? Casino. I think those are the two, in my opinion. Does you have intrigue? Anyone could really win it. Um, I'm I'm kind of holding my reservations because of the last casino battle royale they had. Um, it was a little disappointing. Um, and that's not even including um, the Matt side out botch where he almost died because of because of Michael Naka 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 Zawa. Um, but uh, I, I mean, if there's if if you know there's one thing that AEW invested in more than anything else, it is their tag team wrestling. So I hold out hope. Um, I still don't think it tops the ladder match. Whoever they're going to put in it, it's going to be a great match. I'm excited. Uh, Con, hit him with the plug. Check out the YouTube. Also, check out the Twitter. Find out when I'm getting Thunder Rosa on the podcast because it's coming. We just have to arrange dates. That is it. So please like, share, subscribe. When you're at the YouTube, hit that notification bell. That way, when we release great videos like this, It'll pop right up. You can click on it. It'll take you right to the video. You won't even have to open the YouTube. It'll take you right there. So do that for us. Also, you should check out our Kofi page. That is Kofi.com slash PWO. One, two, three. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for just the price of a single cup of coffee a day, you can help us by putting on great shows like this with just your support. Thank you. Love it. We got that done. Guys, I can't wait to watch Revolution with you both. I'm very excited. But for that, I must bid you all adieu. It is that time of the night. Goodbye. Good night. Bang.